Welcome to our first video from our Learn at Lunch series where I'm very pleased to be joined by Graham Field, one of our Chartered Advisors here at Credence International. So Graham, for anyone that hasn't made their mind up on where it is exactly they want to retire in Europe, where is retirement utopia, so to speak, or the closest thing to it? That's a really good question and I think initially it comes down to personal choice. I mean, sure. I think everybody's uh, preferences are different. So I think the first port of call really is to kind of get a short list of the countries that you like, that you appreciate the climate and the culture and that sort of thing. Once you've kind of narrowed it down a little bit, then you can start looking at the financials. And by that, what I mean is things like the cost of living, the cost of housing, your purchasing power of the money that you have, how much you will buy, i.e., um, and things like taxation. Now, taxation is really interesting to look across Europe because most European countries have this tiered rate of, of income tax. So you pay a set rate of income tax on the first part of your money, and then as your, as your income goes up, the rate of income tax that you pay goes up as well. Um, and they're all very similar, but they, the, ac the outcome, i.e. how much tax you pay, is, is quite different across the countries. So um, certainly the UK favours very well with that because it has quite a large personal allowance uh, limit, first okay. of all, which is like £12,000 a year, £1,000 a month, which is great. You don't pay any tax on that. And then there's quite chunky 20% band, mm -hmm. um, 35,000 or something, that you, you pay 20% on. So actually the UK is one of the, the, the least amount of tax that you would pay across European countries. So to combat that, a lot of the countries, or some of the countries certainly will look at incentives to try and get people to go and live there. Um, if we took an example of Portugal, for example, they have a 10-year a non-habitual tax residency uh, regime. Now what effectively that means is if you're if you're successful in applying for it, then no matter where your income comes from, UK, globally, you know, internationally, wherever it may be, or even in Portugal, you don't pay any tax on it for that first 10-year period, which is great. After that 10-year period, of course, you then start paying tax on it. And Portugal is actually probably a little bit higher than average on the income tax that you would pay. So you've got to think about those sort of things as well. But certainly as a first port of call, I would say you've got to fall in love with the country if you're going to live there for the rest of your life. That's what I would call it. Portugal does have the sun and the gold. Indeed. <laughs> Thanks very much for jo joining us on our first Lunch and Learn video with our expert, Graham Field. Please don't hesitate to get in contact if you've got any further questions on this topic. We're always here to help.